Onboard readout is go. Roger. You are clear for EO. Out. start. Hello, Nina. Hello, Colonel. How's everything going? Fine. Good. How are things with you, Joan? Fine, sir. Is that your report, Lieutenant? Yes, I think you'll find everything's in order. Sure I shall. Shall we continue? situation might need reviewing. I'd like to see the level kept about 20% higher. Funny you should say that. Straker asked me to get your ideas on the subject. He had the same idea. Hi, Colonel. Hi, Lou. What sort of times are you making on the interceptor launches, Lieutenant? About 125 seconds flat. That's pretty good. Well, that about wraps it up for this month. I'll report a clean bill of health. You're fine. I have a possible sighting. We'll relay details of speed and trajectory. I have a trace bearing 062415 green. Confirm sighting, yellow alert. I repeat, yellow alert. Good luck, Mark. OK, let's go. Red alert, red alert. Confirm unidentified flying object. This is moon base control. Red alert. Repeat, red alert. Interceptors, immediate launch. Interceptors, immediate launch. Checks A-OK. -okay. 
Interceptor two, our checks A OK. Interceptor one, our checks A OK. Switch to radio link four. On board computer wave band zero six eight. Confirm speed zero decimal sol eight. Bearing three four two zero four seven. That's it. Don't lose it. Based interceptors have the UFO on positive track. Speed sol zero decimal eight. Speed sol zero decimal eight. Bearing three four two zero four seven. UFO maintaining course. Predict interceptors in range fifty one seconds. Control to leader. Get on board computer for the auto count. Roger. Fire launch, five seconds. Four, three, two, one, zero. A visual contact with explosion. Detonation positive. Did they get it? I still have a contact, Lieutenant. Double check. Positive. Predict UFO on collision course with interceptors. Impact, 32 seconds. Fourteen seconds. Interceptor one to base. Request new course. One to base. Request new course. Control to interceptor three. Alter course to zero two four one eight six. Nine seconds. Interceptor one to base. Request new course. Control to interceptor one. Alter course to zero two. Two, one, eight. It's too late, Lieutenant. <laughs> tells me what happened. Now I want to know why. I don't really know. Oh, come on, Alec. I know you better than that. Things happen so fast. Meaning? I can't be sure. Well, look, I'll settle for an educated guess, Alec. The error could have been human. A decision was taken. It could have worked. But the point is, it didn't. Right. I want the personnel concerned, the two surviving astronauts and Lieutenant Ellis, back here on the next moon flight. Right. Oh, uh, what happened to the UFO? We lost it in a radar blind spot. But one thing's certain, it landed. Landed? Where? Just about the worst place possible. Somewhere in an area of 50,000 square miles in northern Canada. Everything we got that flies is out looking for it.
I've completed grid search. Nothing to report. Okay, Skipper. See you in one hour. No, I'm going around once again. We'll stay alive long enough for one more run. We'll be at the other end of the universe. Uh, has anyone seen Lieutenant Ellis? She's in Central Park. Thanks. Well, there's one of the lucky ones. We'll be back on terra firma tomorrow. If by terra firma you mean Straker's carpet. Rather them than me. Gay, we all took the same chance. Ken was unlucky. These things happen. Nobody's to blame. Don't give me that crud, Mazden. Find it. If you need more aircraft, appropriate them. Yes. Yes, I'm giving you the authority. Yes. Right. Right. What now? The moon base personnel are here, sir. Send them in. Oh, look, Alec. I know. I know. You want that UFO located? Yes. Bradley, Waterman, Lieutenant Ellis, I assume you know why you're here. I'd like to say something, sir. As interceptor leader, I want to accept complete and sole responsibility for what happened. Very gallant. Yes, that's a very brave gesture. But out of line. I know what happened. Now I want to know why. You people were selected because of your outstanding character as well as intellect. What went wrong? Anything from those satellite shots? No, sir. Well, keep looking. It's got to be there somewhere. Speed and altitude are way down. The moon base interceptors must have damaged it. Right. Alert Sky One. That's it. Shadow HQ, Skipper. They've located the UFO. Be right there. I've got the UFO's latest fix, sir. If we steer 042, we should intercept in 18 minutes. Right. Alter course to 042. Give her everything she's got. Yeah, zero for two, maximum speed. Waterman, I'd like you to begin the computer test while I interview astronaut Bradley. Right.
Cigarette? Thank you. Nervous? No. There's no need to be. This is all quite confidential. Please sit. There. Before we start, I'd like to get one thing straight. I've no liking for you blacks. You ever heard that phrase or something similar on Moonbase? No, never. You didn't seem surprised when I said it. I assumed you didn't mean it. Good. Good. This time we'll get it. Range 800 miles, sir. Closing. Launch stations. Launch stations. Lift off stations. Yes, sir. Good luck. Stand by for liftoff. Leveling off at 10,000. Roger. Sky One Airborne, sir. Thanks. Word association. Ready? Father. Mother. Hot. Cold. Geometry. Variable. Oh, yes, of course. You were a pilot before you became an astronaut. Apple. Teacher. Sun. Moon. Tree. Pine. Hate. Love. Visual contact, closing for attack. reports ahead, but UFO is turned and is still airborne. Signal all radar stations. 
Tell the commanders if they lose it this time, they'll answer to me. Get some rest, Alec. You look tired. Shadow control to all radar tracking stations. UFO has been hit, but it's still airborne. Did he say anything else? No, just that I'd been cleared, and I was scheduled on the next flight back to the moon. And us? He's the one who needs looking at. Oh, don't worry. You can't hear in that glass case he calls an office. Tell me something. Does Shadow have anyone checking him out? If they did, it would probably be a computer. <laughs> Coming down, sir. Great. When it lands, let me know its exact position. Believe it. Hmm? Oh, no, that's for you. Thanks. Well, the UFO has landed, but this time we know where. Exact position? Close enough to Lexfield Air Base, Canada, for you to be there by first light tomorrow. Fine. I want them, Alec. I want them alive. I'll do what I can. You'll be the field commander. I'll monitor the whole operation from here. Central Control will give you all the details, but the transporter will be loaded and ready for takeoff at 2100 hours. Fine. Oh, uh, one more thing, Alec. Dr. Schroeder has finished with the moon base personnel. His report is quite clear. I'd like you to handle that, too. Right. I'll do it before I leave. This is the way I want it done. Mahogany. Table. Graph. Green. Off. Cry. This is an interesting reaction. Watch this carefully. Sunrise. Morning. Black. Black. Bird. Blackbird. Blackbird. Oh, yes, yes, good. A 2.04 second delay. You could see her mind racing. She was consciously avoiding giving the standard answer. White. Look at the stress factor at that point. Five times normal. And your conclusions are based on that? My conclusions are based on eight hours of exhaustive tests, 20 years of experience, and the conclusion formed by the computer. That example was one which I thought even a layman might understand. I'll leave you to it. Come in, come in. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to waste time with the details of this report because you'll be given copies of it. But I'd like to read you its conclusions. One, taking into account the circumstances at the time of detonation, it was clearly the duty of Lieutenant Ellis to decide the type of evasive action to be taken. On that count, Lieutenant Ellis is cleared provided that the decision was in no way influenced by emotional factors. Which brings us to point two. The three personnel directly concerned were subject to standard psychiatric and psychocomputer tests with the following results. Astronaut Lou Waterman, clear on all counts. Astronaut Mark Bradley, emotion count 0.48 paranormal, clear on other counts. Lieutenant Ellis, stress factor 1.28 paranormal, emotion count 0.35 paranormal, clear on other counts. Three, these results are attributed to an emotional attachment between Lieutenant Ellis and astronaut Bradley. It ends with a confidential recommendation as to what action should be taken. 
Well, we'll just have to hope that this thing sorts itself out. Meantime, Straker's given you separate postings. Bradley, you'll report to Moonbase. And me, sir? Shadow Headquarters, Earth. Well, everything's lined up with the Air Force. You'll get their fullest cooperation. I'll be on my way. Oh, well, Alec. Uh, who are you taking with you? Does it matter? No, except that I hadn't seen the list of personnel. It includes Mark Bradley and Lieutenant Ellis. Your decision? My decision. Without the aid of a computer. They'll be back inside three days to take up their new postings. Transport has just landed at Lexfield, Canada, sir. Fine, fine. Shadow mobiles one, two, and three proceed to search down. Bars are on their way, sir. Good. Visual contact. Shadow Mobile 2 in position, sir. Shadow Mobile 3 in position. All three mobiles are in position, sir. Good. Send one in. Which one, sir? The one in the best position. Standard procedure. Control to Shadow Mobile 3. Closing for final assault. Roger, Control. Should be able to see it any second. Visual contact. About 300 yards ahead. Any sign of movement? No, nothing. We're going in closer. Right. Take it easy. Shadow 
Mobile Street Control. We're under attack. Head back to the ridge. We're still under fire. They seem to be using some sort of... SM3, can you hear me? Come in, SM3. Radio and tracking link negative. They must have been hit. Send the next one in. I know the risk. Send it in. This is control to Shadow Mobile One. Close in on UFO. Roger. This is Colonel Freeman. We must assume SM3 is non-operational. Stop just below the top of the ridge and proceed on foot. I repeat, proceed on foot. Understood. Forces in position and standing by, sir. Okay, find out. Two fifty yards from UFO. Closing in. They're closing in, sir. Thank you. 
Look out! Flying the alien back to HQ now. You all right? I'm fine. Mark, there's something I must tell you. After Mobile 3 was hit, Freeman told me to send another one in. Mobile 2 was in a better position. It's okay. I was glad of the action. Don't you understand what I'm saying? I risked your life to prove a point. You did it to prove that Straker and the computers were wrong. Much the same situation we've experienced before. The alien was breathing a liquid containing a bioacrophilic compound, imparting the usual green tint to the face and neck. The hair was unaffected, and the eyes had protective shells. Oh, we've managed to revert the respiration to normal atmosphere. Successfully? Five hours is not long enough to tell. It's long enough to tell us that we're dealing with a comparatively young alien. Past experience has shown us that once they breathe our atmosphere, they deteriorate to their true age. I want to see if I can get anything out of him, Doctor. How soon can he be ready? Look, we're crossing new physiological frontiers. How can I say? Well, I... I suppose he's as ready now as he'll ever be. Right, Doctor. to be humanoid and highly intelligent. The biosensor tells us his eyes and ears are in excellent condition. Computer reports indicate he's in perfect health. There must be some way we can communicate. You've been interrogating him for 43 minutes. How much longer? Why? We've got to remove the barrier compound from his hair to assist oxygen absorption. All right, all right. Now, let's go over it once again. The answers are needed to certain questions. I'm asking you to cooperate. It's no good, Alec. He either can't or doesn't want to understand. There's no alternative. I'm going to try one of the new anodynes to break down his resistance. Which do you recommend, Doctor? 
Well, GL seventh, the most effective in my experience, but what in this case? Well, I can't guarantee the result. It could be dangerous. How dangerous? Who knows? But the decision and the responsibility must be yours. Well, your reactions are all right. You heard that clearly enough. All right, Doctor. drug will lower your resistance. It's no use fighting it. You must help us. You must cooperate. Pulse rate increasing. Still increasing. you to accept this. We've worked together a long time, Alec. Maybe too long. Can't we talk about it? There's not much to say. It's a difference in temperament. I think I wanted him to die. It was a calculated risk. It's not only that. You make all your decisions based on cold logic, computer predictions. Nineteen eighty four. I wonder what it's going to be like in twenty years' time. Will the computers take over completely? Why don't you ask them? They seem to have all the answers, even now. We build them, program them, and they tell us what we're going to think before we know it ourselves. Well, you better make that phone call. I'll sleep on it. Straker, it's for you, Alec. Freeman. Well, when did you find this out? 
Well, you know what it means, don't you? Right. No, no. Now leave that with me. Yeah. Bye. Mark Bradley. Important? He thinks it is. Well, it looks like you were right. You and your computers. <sighs> oh, by the way, Alec. Uh, would you tell Lieutenant Ellis and Astronaut Bradley that they're to return to Moon Base immediately and assume their normal duties? That's not what the report recommended. Uh, not the first report, no. But this report analyzed the flight paths. And it shows that, had normal procedure been followed, we would have lost all three interceptors. You mean her decision wasn't influenced by emotion? You tell me. See you. <laughs>